Well, good afternoon, everyone. Happy New Year. It's great to be part of this very exciting roundtable. And let me start by saying that uh, I recognize so many people in this room that if I acknowledge everyone, it would take up all of my speaking time. Uh, this is a great group of committed public health leaders. Uh, I know and respect so many of you and want to thank you for this wonderful opportunity uh, that has been provided by the IOM. Special thanks to Russ Pate, who is just an absolutely tireless uh, leader in physical activity and public health. It's so great to work with him. I want to acknowledge the leadership of Dr. Feinberg, Lynn Parker, and of course our wonderful friend and colleague, Bill Dietz. Bill is a tremendous global leader and a friend and teacher for me. So Bill, thank you for convening this. Succeeding Kevin Concannon is always a pleasure, and HHS and USDA is working very closely together in this administration, and we're very proud of that. And then I have the pleasure of representing the Department of Health and Human Services here, some 80,000 employees who are committed to working with you on this issue. And I have uh, in the audience here Rosie Henson, our wonderful senior advisor to my office, Robin McKinnon, Shelley Fole, Heidi Blank, Sarah Lee, Katrina Butner Piercy, I think that's her new married last name, and many other colleagues from HHS. Can all my HHS colleagues just stand up and be recognized? Big round of applause for them. There they are. So what I'm grateful to all of you is that uh, this area of obesity for so long was viewed as an area of no hope, supposedly hopeless. But this is a new year. A new year means new hope. And some people say that the job of public health is to turn no hope into new hope. And that's exactly what this round table is about. Under Secretary Con Cannon focused mostly on the nutritional aspects of obesity solutions. I will focus more on physical activity aspects of this life-saving magic pill known as physical activity. Two things though, it's not magic and it's not a pill, but it is life-saving and the more attention we can provide to this very important dimension of obesity solutions, the better off we're going to be. And as you've heard repeatedly from each speaker, the overall strategy has to be population-based, community-based, what we call a social determinants approach. Or to make this very concrete, uh, we like to say that health doesn't just start in a doctor's office, but rather health starts also where people live, labor, learn, play, and pray. I made that up, so I'll say it again. <laughs> health starts where people live, labor, learn, play, and pray. And what thrilled me by looking at the agenda for today is that you have that place-based format for this afternoon's discussion. And that's the way we're going to make change, to promote health in all policies, to promote a social determinants approach, and to make the healthy choice the easy or easier choice. It was in early 2010 that the President established a White House Task Force on Childhood Obesity that for the first time ever brought many federal departments and agencies together to develop an action plan to solve the issue of childhood obesity. So for the first time, many federal departments and agencies were at the table. There's a saying that if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. <laughs> so we were all at the table there, and this action plan now has been implemented in the, in the sub subsequent four years, and we're building on many successes. Let me just quickly review them with you. You know that for many years there was a Dietary Guidelines of America that was co-sponsored by USDA and HHS. In 2008, HHS published its first physical activity guidelines for Americans that have now just been updated in 2013 through a so-called physical activity guidelines for Americans mid-course report. So I encourage you all to take a look at that. Many thanks to Russ Pate again for his great leadership uh, on that effort and to Katrina butner Piercy for their great work. If you look at that mid-course report, it stresses that we can use a place-based strategy to advance physical activity, particularly in schools, in preschools, and in child care settings. And that has fostered a collaboration also with the Department of Education and Secretary Duncan that we enjoy very much. 
Really penetrating the school environment is critical. I know you've had a session here already on that topic. And it's a challenge in terms of having much progress because that decision about how much physical activity is promoted in those settings is really up to local schools and local school districts. But one example where we've been able to make some progress is through our President's Council on Fitness, Sports, and Nutrition. And I'm very proud of our Executive Director, Shelley Full, who is here, who has helped lead a lot of that discussion. In 2012, our President's Council helped update and release a so-called Presidential Youth Fitness Program that's been mentioned here several times already. But this is another way of bringing the theme of physical activity into schools in the modern age. In the past, you may remember, there was a youth fitness test that was based on standards that were over 25 years old and favored students that were athletically talented. And this new Presidential Youth Fitness Program unveiled in 2012 now has a broader approach to have a health-related fitness assessment that modernizes uh, the assessment through what's called Fitness Gram. It creates a snapshot of each child's health based on current standards. And then there's also a great emphasis on recognition of progress on professional development for all people within the schools who care about this and are advancing this theme. It encourages kids to take on physical activity, not just to get through the school year or to get through PE, but rather as a lifelong commitment. So we're very proud of that interaction with schools through the Presidential Youth Fitness Program, and we see that as a foundation that can be built for the future. Then, of course, we're now finally in 2014, and the Affordable Care Act is in full implementation. We all know that and are following that carefully. And this audience knows so well that the Affordable Care Act is much more than just enrolling people into insurance, although that is critically important. It's about creating a vision and a system of true health and prevention for the future. And the prevention and public health aspects of health reform have not been as widely publicized as we all think it should. We're very grateful that through the advocacy of many of you, we have a prevention and public health fund that's now entering its fifth year. We are very grateful to the community transformation grants that have been awarded through that fund that improve the health of some 120 million community members. It was great to hear my colleague, Commissioner Bartlett from Massachusetts talk about how community transformation grants have affected my state, Massachusetts although I oversee all states, of course. Uh, we know that through prevention aspects of health reform, all new private health care and Medicaid expansion plans cover obesity-related screening and behavioral counseling with respect to uh, obesity. So we're very proud of that. And then we have some formal structures with respect to an internal national prevention council, and then an external advisory group, a prevention advisory group chaired by Dr. Jeff Levy, who is a wonderful public health leader and advocate. So we're proud of that progress. And then let's move. We've heard about, I know repeatedly today, it is such an honor to see the progress of this effort that's celebrating its fourth anniversary uh, next month. And I have the great pleasure as the Assistant Secretary to convene monthly meetings throughout HHS and increasingly throughout federal government to bring all the agencies and groups together who are advancing obesity solutions through Let's Move. And a major theme of Let's Move is recognizing leadership. One example of a great leader, of course, is our First Lady. And one recent example of progress was a meeting she just convened recently on food marketing to children, a key, key topic. I want to thank Larry Solar and the Partnership for Healthier America who have worked closely with the private sector because the private sector has tremendous experience in marketing food and beverages to the public. And the First Lady convened this meeting to see if there are better ways to market healthier foods and beverages to the general public in terms of promoting public health. One outcome of that meeting was a new agreement between the Sesame Street industry and the Produce Marketing Association to partner to produce 
more advances with respect to fresh fruit and vegetable consumption to kids, using some of the marketing information to promote these healthier foods. We're very proud of that. And then you heard from Leon Andrews, and we're very proud of him, the National League of Cities, and so many others, about the tremendous progress on Let's Move Cities, Towns, and Counties. And again, I want to thank Rosie Henson for all her help in setting up that very, very exciting collaborative. Again, the theme here is local leadership. No one person or no one group can do this alone, but if we recognize and encourage leaders around the country, in this case, mayors and other elected officials, they can tackle the five goals of let's move cities, towns, and counties, particularly the fifth one, to improve physical activity through more parks, recreational spaces, and other examples. And this has now reached more than 400 locations, covering some 62 million people, as Leon has told you. And we see some localities like Beaumont, Texas, Selma, Alabama, and Columbia, South Carolina, step up and show tremendous leadership. We are thrilled that the Let's Move Active Schools effort has now made great progress. And we have a very important theme to put forward there, that, that active kids do better academically. There's been increasing research on that. Kids must learn to be active and must be active to learn. I made that up, so I'll say that again, too. <laughs> Kids must learn to be active and must be active to learn. So that's a new theme we're trying to promote through Let's Move Active Schools. And the progress in child care, you've already heard a little bit from Kevin Concannon and others. So this place-based strategy, this comprehensive social determinant strategy has taken hold. We have a foundation here under this uh, administration that we're very proud of. As my time uh, lapses here, I do want to stress that we at the department can help much more in terms of surveys and data. We know that three out of four Americans don't get the physical activity they need. That's self-reported data. But actually, if you measure through accelerometers and other means, for adults, that number might be more like 5% or less getting the recommended activity as suggested by the physical activity guidelines of America. So we have a lot of work to do. We want to make survey information and data information more relevant to states and local communities, if at all possible, we'll work with you to do that. We want to understand what combination of policy and place-based strategies have led to making a real difference. We want to see what innovations, interventions have worked that can be sustained for the future. We have funding at NIH that's looking through uh, many of these new areas with respect to policy evaluations and other approaches. And then finally, as many people have alluded to here, we need leaders, once again, that big leadership theme, who are willing to and eager to reach out to non-traditional partners in education, in urban planning, in transportation, and other parts of society. One example that Robin McKinnon just told me was in the National League of Cities Congress that was held in Seattle recently. There was a very busy and very enthusiastic ses session on active transportation, talking about how communities could improve neighborhood walkability and bikeability. And the health was one of the outcomes of interest, but not the major one. These officials and leaders were really also concerned about livability, about social capital, about making their communities stronger. And so it's this leadership and bringing non-traditional partners to the table that's really important for the future. So as I close, I want to thank all of you because you are turning this situation from no hope to new hope. It's a very exciting time. It's a very exciting new year, and we look forward at HHS to working even more closely with you in the future. Thank you very, very much.